Hey, what's up guys? We're back out here in the freezing Minnesota cold winter. It's negative six, but it feels like negative 22. I got four Winchester SX4 shotguns with another freezing shotgun test. This one a little bit different. We're gonna see which lubricants perform the best. So all four of these SX4s are lubed up just a little bit different. We're gonna get them chocked full of snow and see which lubricant performs the best. You ready? Let's go. Hey guys, we're gonna get these guns lubed up, get them out there and get them to the test. Before we do that, I just wanna make a quick mention. My favorite products and my discount codes are all on my website. You can check the link down below. Now when you purchase some of these products, I get a little bit of support for the channel, so anything that you're so inclined to buy, definitely appreciate it, whether it's Axle Hearing Protection, ESSI Pro, Carlson Choke Tubes, or many more of the products, check them down in the description. Much appreciated. So here we have our four different oils, starting with the Hoppies number nine. This is just a traditional wet lube, high viscosity, and penetration lubricant for all mechanisms on a firearm. So we're gonna put that one on this red GBX gun. Then I got the Otis Dry Lube. This has actually been my personal favorite over the last number of years. We used to use wet lubricants in our guns, moved to the Otis Dry Lube. So I'm really hoping this comes to the top. I'm not gonna lie, that's gonna be in the TFL Winchester SX4. Then I have the Otis Otis Mission Critical. This is supposed to be like their top end lubricant, right? It will not freeze, burn, or carbonize. It says it right there. And if it says it right there, you know it's true. I have not used this really, so I'm really curious to see if this one will beat out the dry lube, and two, if it will beat out the other lubricants. Moving to the fourth lubricant is just good old REM oil. A lot of people use REM oil, and Hoppy's number nine, that's why I chose those. I've been using the Otis products, but hey, I'm open to see what happens in this test. And I'd love to see in your comments, do you think there's gonna be a difference in how these guns perform in the freezing cold? And then we might just throw a little curveball and get them real dirty to see which ones malfunction, if any of them malfunction. I cleaned all four of these Winchester SX4s the exact same way. I'm gonna lubricate them the exact same way, just with the different lubricants. So one of my evaluation points for these lubricants is reliability of operation of the firearm, right? That should go without saying. Another one is gonna be how dirty do these firearms get after shooting, you know, 100 rounds or so of ammunition through them. So after we go out and shoot, we're gonna come back in, see how dirty they are, see if there's much of a difference. Lastly, I'm looking at application. Application of the lubricant. How easy is it to apply, get in the right places? And so far this Hoppy's number nine, it's kind of a pain. Okay, next up is the Otis Dry Lube. Now, I am a little biased. I've been using this lubricant. Part of the reason I love it is look at this. It's got a nice spray nozzle. Works in there really well. Easy to get a full application. We're gonna let that set in and then wipe out the excess a little bit. What I have found with the Dry Lube is that it doesn't pick up debris and particles nearly as much as like a wet lube, right? Moving on to the Mission Critical. As I mentioned, this is something I haven't used much of. Here's the lubricant here. And this stuff is quite expensive, so I really hope it performs really well. It is in a spray bottle, which is nice. Lastly, we're to the REM oil. A lot of people use REM oil. Here it says, specially formulated for cleaning, lubricating, and protecting firearms. Long lasting, smooth, reliable function under all weather conditions, effective negative 20, which is good because we're cold today, to 165 degrees. Time to put them back together on the clock. Let's see how fast I can do it. Five oh seven. They're back together. Let's get them outside. Well, it is uh, officially cold. My phone says right now negative six. Feels like negative 22. So yeah, I think we got adequate weather for this freezing shotgun test. First thing I'm gonna do is just run a baseline test. I'm just gonna pound 25 rounds through each gun, make sure each one functions as it's supposed to, has no hiccups when the gun is perfectly clean, perfectly lubricated. For this test, we're shooting the Federal Top Gun 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, ounce and an eighth, eight shot. Hoppy's number nine, let's pound some rounds. Ooh, yeah. 
Let's dump a few more. There's our hoppies number nine. Moving on to the Otis dry lube. I know what you're thinking. You're burning through a lot of ammo for this, and you're right, I am, but it's for science. No issues. All right, here we go, mission critical. She's smoking. Okay, no issues. On to the rim oil. Hey, fun fact about this Winchester SX4. It was one of the first ones made. It's actually serial number 84, which happens to be my football number back in the high school days, in the glory days. So this gun is uh, kind of special to me, you know? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're 25 rounds in. They're all working just fine. This cold weather is nothing. What if we get them a little snowy, a little iced up though? That snow is hard. <laughs> Well, let's get them good and iced up. Get some snow in there. Guns are good and frozen. It's time to get them back out. Get some shooting in. Now all these chambers are chock full of snow. So I'm just gonna try to break things loose a little bit. All right, that one should be good to go. I don't recommend doing this at home. You don't want any obstructions in your barrel. Could uh, cause a pretty serious accident. So here we go, we're at the Hoppies number nine. This gun is good and froze up. Let's see if I can bust it loose a little bit. I heard the firing pin go, but no shot, no shot. All right, we're getting close, I feel it. If you watched the video that I put out last week, the freezing gun test, gas versus inertia, you know that the Winchester SX4 was one of the top performing guns in the frozen gun test. Again, did not kick the shell out on round number dos. The lifter still doesn't want to work. Doesn't bring the shell in. Hey, look at that. We are cycling, ladies and gentlemen, halfway through the box. All right, almost through 50 rounds total. There we go, now she's running. All right, moving on to the Otis Dry Lube. See if we can get this gun running a little bit quicker. Shot number one. Look at that, first shot goes off, did not eject. Not cycling, lifter's not working. Look at that, a little bit faster than over here. That baby's smoking. There's 50 rounds, running good. We're moving on to this SX4, lubed up with the mission critical. Just like all the other guns, the lifter's not working quite right. Let's see if we can get that loosened up. First shot goes off. Second shot. There we go. Shot number five and six started to cycle. There we go. Round number 50. Okay, that's running pretty good. Pretty impressed with how well that one went. Moving on to the rem oil. The gun's getting hot with that snow in there, right? Which means they're gonna ice up as they sit there again. If we have issues after letting them sit, we will see. Okay, ejected the first shell. That's a really positive sign. Did not bring it up like the rest of the guns. So it's ejecting. Oh, there we go. Cycling on round number four. She's running good, ladies and gentlemen. And our last two shells. Look at that. Running good. All the guns are working, they're all cycling. This one took me probably the most to get going, loosened up. Both these guns, I believe, were somewhere between five, six rounds to get loosened up. This one actually got working four rounds. 
I'm not gonna put a lot of weight on that. I'm gonna shoot another 25, see if there's any malfunctions. If we're getting no malfunctions, I'm gonna start throwing some dirt in these guns, see if we can get them to gum up a little bit. Here we go with the hoppies. Try over the head. No cycle. That gun would not cycle upside down over the head. Now I know what some of you are gonna say. That's not how guns are meant to be shot. Absolutely, but I know these guns shoot upside down over the head, done it many, many times. So it's a good indicator if it cycles upside down over the head in the condition that it's in, whatever lubricant we're using is slightly more reliable. Moving on to the Otis dry lube. No issues there, straight from the shoulder. No issues from the hip. No, sir. Okay, we've got a few to cycle there. That's an improvement. Moving on to the mission critical, the MC-10. No issues right off the bat with that gun. This one seems to be running really smooth. Yes, sir. The first two did. There we go, cycling over the head. That might be our uh, front runner right now, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on to the rem oil. A little over the head action. Oh my goodness. Without a hiccup. I'm surprised by that. That is actually very surprising how well that worked over the head. All right, it's time to get nerdy. I did a little vacuuming for my family. And uh, let's see, how do I open this? Here we go. Oh no, oh that's disgusting. Does this just make you mad to see me do this? Just totally get these guns filthy dirty. Now. One thing I look for in a lubricant is a lubricant that's not gonna hold as much dirt and debris, right? So we'll see how these guns do. Well, this will uh, shorten the lifespan of these guns, but here we go. Let's try her out, Hoppy's number nine. How are you gonna hold up? First one did not cycle. Second one did not cycle. Third one did not eject the shell. Four did not eject the shell. Five did not eject the shell. That might be it, guys. Moving on to the Otis Dry Lube. I'm hoping for some better results here, but we'll see. Shot one. No cycle. No cycle. No cycle. 10 shots in, not a single one cycled. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shoot through all of them, see if any of them will cycle. And then I'm gonna touch them up with just a little lubricant in the action, see if they get back cycling again. This one is caked up. Okay, I'm not feeling optimistic about this. Not a single one cycled. Not a single one cycled. All right, Rem Oil, what do you got? See what it does. Ooh, stove piped. Ah, I was almost feeling hopeful there for a second. None of them, absolutely none of them cycled. So we're in the field, we got dirty guns. It's a little emergency time. This is not meant for cold weather. Yeah, that's, that's done. Let's get a little Otis dry lube in the bad boy here. All right, that worked pretty well. Over to the mission critical. And let's see if we can get a little rim oil in this bad boy. This stuff does not apply well in the cold at all. All right, what do you think now? Different result, we're gonna get some shells to go through these guns? I think so. Let's see if this SX4 lubricated with the hoppies. Come on. No go on that one. I hope one of these guns works. Nope, not a one cycle. It's not leaving me much hope for the rest of these. Mission critical. Oh, it tried. Hey, a shell ejected. It's giving me a little hope here. 
ejected the shell, but still doesn't want to bring it up quite right. Come on, you can do it. At least it ejected some of the rounds, right? Rem oil, what can you do for us? Oh my goodness. Look at that. Anyone surprised by that? Oh my goodness. All right, folks, that's a hundred rounds through each of these guns. As you can see, my hands are all oily, full of grease. It's freezing cold out here. Let me get the guns inside. I'll break them apart, show you what they look like. We'll talk about these lubricants and we'll decide which one stands out above the rest. Okay, so this test was extreme. Maybe a little too extreme. I just want to break the guns down here and see how dirty they are. Here's the Hoppies piston. Nice, wet, dirty. The piston from the dry lube. A little drier, not as wet as the Hoppies one, but still pretty dirty. The Mission Critical is, out of all of them, probably the least wet and probably least caked on with junk. This one's fairly dry as well. With this being a wet lubricant, super greasy, that actually doesn't look too bad. I mean, obviously some debris in there, but it doesn't look terrible. But just the amount of dirt that I got in there obviously kept it from operating well. That was the Hoppies. Let's look at the Otis Dry Lube. The bolt actually doesn't look too bad, but look at this trigger group. And I'm wondering if that wasn't a big part of my problem with the dry lube, is I got a lot of dirt in that trigger group. Looking at the Mission Critical, pretty grimy, pretty dirty. Actually, the Hoppies one, there's barely any dirt in there, which is quite surprising. And that's what it looks like from the chamber. The bolt, however, quite grimy, but not terrible. Not terrible at all. Check out the dry lube one and compare this trigger group versus this one. The dry lube one had a lot more dirt in it. This one has a lot of dirt, a lot of grime. Now this one just is caked full of oil. Normally, I would say that I like the dry lubes, but if you were in the field and had an absolute emergency, a heavier oil might work a little bit better. I was surprised by this, how well the REM oil worked. I mean, I hated how it goes on, I believe they make a REM oil that is an aerosol that you could put just like the dry lube here, put a tube on there and get a better application. But when these got totally grimed up, I think this heavier wet oil worked a little bit better than the dry lube did. As far as application, I was able to get in there working all the nooks and crannies, all the grooves. I love the application of that dry lube, but the REM oil surprised me, I'm not gonna lie. The Mission Critical uh, worked really, really well up until we poured the dirt in there. Everything worked okay until we got the dirt in there. The Hoppies was probably my least favorite out of all of these. But what I would say, if I had that much dirt in my gun, I wouldn't just douse it with more oil. I would clean it really, really quick. If this was an emergency in the field, this is how I would clean it super quick to get back out really fast. No matter what oil you lubricate your gun with, I would highly recommend some MC7 and some quick scrub because here's what I'm gonna do. MC7 in the chamber, foaming action. We'll let that sit. I'm gonna get this cleaned out real quick. Foaming action, let that sit. Come to the bolt. We're just gonna hit this real quick. And then I'm gonna hit the backside of this barrel that goes in the chamber. That's really all I'm gonna do. I think everything else is gonna be good to go. I'm gonna come back real quick with a nylon brush. Just try to get in those grooves, break anything loose. There shouldn't be too much that's caked on because we only shot 100 rounds through these guns. This is the magic stuff right here, the quick scrub. Got the MC7 on there, it's working, breaking everything out. I'm just gonna flush it really quick. Come to my barrel. See, when you use just a rag, it's hard to get in these hard to reach places. I'm blasting out any dirt, debris that's stuck in there. I'll maybe just give it one quick wipe after I get the chamber. Coming back with the dry lube, we're good to go. I can still hear a little grime in there. We're not perfectly clean yet, as you can imagine. There's a plunger back there that the bolt goes into and that pushes back into the stock. So I actually think I got so dirty that I'm gunked up inside the stock. So to actually do a real proper cleaning, I think I need to take the stock off. I'm gonna give this a little blast of lube. Let's see if this is enough to overcome how dirty it is. 
Let's see if this gun's back up and working just with that super quick clean. If it's not, then I know I got bigger issues because I've used a lot of this dry lube and I haven't really had much for issues, but I normally don't dump a whole bunch of dirt and debris in my gun. Let's go out and see if this gun now works after it's had a quick clean. And if it doesn't, we'll know that there's something more going on back here that we'll have to look at. Yep, still cold outside. Okay, let's see what happens here. Okay, we're still having some issues. Oh, we got a couple off there. This is interesting because it's moderately clean, clean enough that it should work really, really well. But yet I'm still having some issues. It sounds terrible back here. I don't know if you all can hear that. Probably not over the sh shotgun blast, but I can hear this spring going back and forth in there. So I think I'm gonna take the stock off see what it looks like, see what we gotta do to get this gun running smooth again. I knew it had to do more than just lubrication. We cleaned it up and it is actually sort of working now, but not, uh, not nearly as well as it should. So let's take it inside, take the stock apart and see what it looks like. Okay, so I got the SX4 torn down. This is the recoil spring that goes in here. That buffer tube goes back, recoil spring comes back. I think it's gunked up in there, but we'll see. To get to that, I had to take the stock off, obviously. Then I had to punch out the pin that's right here. Next step is to screw this end piece out. You can use a flathead screwdriver. This one's turning, but be careful because there's a spring that's gonna come flying out. This piece comes out the end. Then we pull, I'm gonna hold it close to my body. Pull that out, the spring is under some tension. Okay, there is a bunch of gunky liquid coming out. This is my afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks like I'll be here going through guns. But to conclude, which oil stood up the best? Was it the hoppies? Was it the dry lube? Was it the mission critical? Or was it the REM oil? I would say if any of them I was least impressed with from application to how wet and sticky the gun was, was the hoppies. My least favorite there, we'll get that one out of the way. As far as application goes, the dry lube, absolute winner. As far as application, I wanted to love this mission critical. It's expensive, it goes on decent. I used up this whole bottle today, so that was expensive. The rim oil performed well in the field. Really impressed with how well it performed. Application on this one, sucks when it got cold i couldn't even get it to hardly squirt out if they had an aerosol i might be more thrilled about that i think for me it comes down to both of these application ease of use i love that it's dry but when it really got messed up out there when we dumped it in the rim oil actually did very very well so i'm gonna leave it up to you guys to decide which one you prefer i would love to hear in the comments down below what oil lubricant you use on your shotgun what success you've seen, because when you share, we all get more knowledgeable, we all can do better. Thanks so much for watching, as always, you can check the links down below and see what products I like to use. I've got discount codes, make sure you check those out. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, it's only those shots that you're laser focused on that you're gonna hit. So live target focused. See ya.